Hi, welcome back, and this is video two in my basic Ubuntu server install. Um, we are going to configure the basic network. So we are going to set a static IP. We are going to disable IP version six. We are going to set up a host name, fully qualified domain name, and set up UFW. So we're going to start our server here. This is just our base server from our first video. Here we are at the login. We log in with the user and password that we created. Okay, so we're logged in here. Mm -hmm. Clear the screen so we, you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so first we're going to configure a static IP4 address. Um, when we set this up, basically what had happened was um, DHCP gave this virtual box, uh, this virtual machine, I should say, a IP address from your router. Um, in my, in my situation, I do not want that to happen. Um, you can set a static IP address from your router, um, but I don't want to do that either. I want this server to be a DHCP server and a DNS server. So, in that regards, I cannot have the router addressing any devices on the network. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a static IP And this should be fairly straightforward. Uh oh. Okay, there we go. This should be stra fairly straightforward. Um, the command is sudo nano etsy networking network 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 slash interfaces. Okay, so we open this up. Our sudo password is our password for our user and here you can see our network configuration file okay so we see here this is our loopback this is what we want here primary network interface auto iface so interface and there's our interface they changed this from ETH0 or ETH1 to now read as some weird crazy thing um, it had been like this in other distributions and specifically Debian for a little while so we are going to change DHCP to static. Um, and then, now that it's static, um, we have to actually give it an address and tell it what it needs to know so it can reach the outside world. So we're going to tell it, we're going to put down here address and 192.168.1.2. In my situation, I use .2. Since the router is dot one, this is going to be my DNS server, my DHCP, DHCP server, so I leave it as a lower IP address. Um, I reserve 192.168.1.1 to 1.9 for any of my network appliances, uh, servers and uh, closed circuit television DVRs, um, any kind of file server or anything like that, I leave in those in that small range. It's easier to remember one through nine um, if you need to, but in this case, since we're setting up a FQDN, fully qualified domain name, um, you can actually get to these servers by using their fully qualified domain addresses once we have DNS set up. So first thing is first, address. Next, we have to give it a, we have to let it know the <coughs> net mask which is 255.255.255.0 since we're not going outside of this 192.168.1 realm um, so basically NetBask tells, tells us that any address between 192.168.1.0 to 1.255 is reachable by any of these, those are the only addressable spaces and NetMask makes that possible so our network 
is 192.168.1.0 because that's where our network starts. Our broadcast 192.168.1.255 that's our broadcast address. Our gateway is our router address 192.168.1.1 and down here I'm going to add DNS name servers. Um, for now, I'm just going to use the router as a DNS name server, and then I will switch this um, in, the fu in a future video. So DNS name servers 68.1.1. So, whoops, 168. So we're going to use that as our DNS name server. Name servers. Spelled it wrong there. Um, and we're going to DNS search example.com. That's going to be the domain name that I'm going to be using here as an example. Um, you can pretty much use whatever you want as long as you're not trying to be on the outside and you don't actually own the domain. Um, if this is just going to be your internal network, you can use whatever .com, .land, dot any top level domain name or any dot .whatever. Um, you could even use example.land, example uh, .net, .org, .tl, .whatever. Um, just as long as it's not going to be outside of your network. Because um, obviously it's not going to resolve outside of your network. So it's control X to exit, yes to save, enter. And we will clear this. And then our next step is to remove IP, well, disable IP version 6. So how we're going to do this is we're going to um, echo. We're going to we're going to add a few lines to our um, syscontrol.config. Um, so that is in sudo nano etsy sys. If you push tab here, it'll give you the options. Um, ctl dot conf. So here we are, and I'm pretty sure I already added these to this one. Yes, I did. Right here at the bottom. Where it says right here .NET IPv6 config all disable, all default dot disable and LO disable IPv6. So these, and they all have at the end as you can see equal one. Um, these lines basically make it so IP version six is disabled. Um, I'm not going to be using IP version six. Uh, maybe in the future when it's more widely available and it's actually being used for my network connection, but it is not at the moment. So I just disable it. There's save and exit after you've added those three lines. And then we are going to next set our host name. So sudo nano backslash etsy hosts localhost right here. We're going to put our since our 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 uh, our host name is Venus at the moment, which yours can be yours is probably whatever you set it up to be. Um, now we are going to add our top level domain to it. So Venus dot example dot com, and then over here space over Venus. So it's going to resolve as both of those. We also have to do the same thing for its actual IP address. So there we have it as 192.168.1.2, which is our IP address we assigned here. And the same thing, venus.example.com and venus. Oops, venus. Down here, you can just ignore these. Um, those don't exist. Those won't be being used. Um, but basically here, you can, uh, this is basically like a dumb DNS. Um, you could also add, if you wanted to, uh, it's like in Windows, your host file. Um, you can block things. You can send things to different areas. Um, you can do one IP address to a different name. So, for example, my router is 192.168.1.1. .1. Um, I can actually make that resolve as... Mercury. Dot example. Dot com. 
Mercury. So now if I type mercury.example.com after I ping something, it will ping 192.168.11. So that's basically what this is. Um, but it's only going to do it from this computer. It will not do it elsewhere because we aren't giving that information to anyone else. So we save that and exit. Control X. Yes. Enter. So there our host name is set up. So if we do host name, it should come up as Venus. And then host name hyphen F, which is the flag F for fully qualified domain name, it's going to give us the whole thing, venus.example.com. So now if we, like I said before, if we ping mercury.example.com, it's going to ping 192.168.11. Now if we tried that from any other computer on the same network, that would not happen. It would just be like, well, what are you trying to do? Because it doesn't have that information in the host file and the DNS, it, it doesn't have that in the DNS server. We'll fix that later. Um, that was just an example. So there we have those two things set up. Now the third thing we have to set up is UFW. UFW is pretty much a simple firewall. Um, we need to set it up and make sure that we allow SSH to get in um, and out. So we are going to first look at the status of UFW. So sudo UFW status. So right now, our status is active, and we're allowing port 22. Yours should not show that. I had already done this on this machine previously. So um, the first thing you need to do is UFW, sudo UFW, enable. Firewall is active and enabled on system startup. That will be your first thing. The next thing you need to do is sudo ufw um, actually let's 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 uh, let's let's show you a little example um, first I'm gonna disable so now we're going to sudo ufw status and ours should look both the same now nope guess yeah so we're denying port 22 at this point um, let me remove SSH. Oh, that's not how we do it. Deny, allow, reject, limit, delete. Um, well, we'll start with this now, for now. So, we're going to try to get in with PuTTY. Just to give you an example of how UFW works. 192.168.1. Uh, actually, we're not sure what our IP address I have config. So our IP address is 118. So we're going to put 118 in here. Because our changes that we had made do not apply till we restart. So we're going to open on port 22. And we are going to not open it because it's going to decline us. It's going to time out and not work. So down here, if we if we type in tail hyphen f backslash var log ufw dot log, it's going to tell us down here ufw block ufw block. So it's blocking us from trying to get in. As you can see, Windows window do do do. So you can see down here. Oh, forgot about that whole thing. So let's try this again. And we'll watch our log as we do this. So open this up. 1092.168.1.118, port 22. Open. It should pop up down here that it's blocking us. Well, I guess it's not going to do that. But it is blocking us. That's what's blocking us. So let's let's exit this here, um, clear the screen, and then we are going to sudo ufw allow ssh. Now I want you to put this in there as well. This will allow ssh. 
So sudo ufw status should now say port 22 allow from anywhere. Now we can make this so it only allows it from certain IP addresses, but we're not going to do that. It's not open to the outside world because our router is in the way. Um, if you were to open it to the outside world, I would suggest changing the port from 22 to something else. Um, some some nondescript port that is not going to be bombarded. So we open up Putty here, and now 168.1.118, and we hit open, and it lets us log in. It, it's letting us log in now, since we're we're allowing that. So that's how UFW works, um, and it's pretty simple. If you want it, and say we installed Apache, and we want to allow HTTP or HTTPS or FTP. That's all we need to do. Um, it knows the port numbers, it, and it'll allow them. Um, UFW is pretty fairly straightforward. You can also add arguments, and you can add it. Um, like I said, you can add, you can disable from IPs. You can only add, allow one IP, another IP, um, or a group of IPs even, or no IPs outside of this range. Is a better way to state that. Um, so let's restart and make sure all of our all of our networking is working. So sudo reboot, and this will restart a machine. There's our grub bootloader, and we're on our way back in. Okay, so log in. Clear the screen. Okay, so IF config. This should show us our configuration. So ENPOS3, that is our Ethernet. As you can see up there, link encapsulation is a Ethernet. Hardware address is our MAC address. INET address 192.168.1.2, that's perfect. Um, that's exactly what we wanted. Okay, so now let's make sure we can get outside of our network um, so that if we need to do anything, we can get out there. So ping 10 www.google.com. And now we're pinging Google as you can see, and we are accessing the outside. We can also make sure we can access the inside. There's one, one millisecond. Um, and that's it for now. Uh, join, me, join back for part three, um, where we will be installing the DHCP server and the DNS server. Um, that one's going to be a little bit long but it's definitely worth it. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.